Good evening and welcome to State Circle. I'm Jeff Salkin. Our newsmaker this week is a Marylander in high office. Not a political office, but literally a high office. Navy Commander Reed Wiseman is currently working aboard the International Space Station, and he joins us now. Commander, thank you for speaking with us. Jeff, it's great to speak to you. And uh, Owings Mills, that's right down the street from where I grew up, so it's great to know that's where you are right now. It's a pleasure to be talking to folks in Maryland. I have to ask, do, do you wear that Orioles jersey every day up there? You know, lately, it's been pretty good to be an Orioles fan, so I keep it handy uh, for events like this, and on the weekends, I certainly bring it out. I guess in space, nobody can hear you cheer. That's the, uh, that's the problem. I know they keep you you're so busy uh, on duty at the space station. Tell us a little bit about what, what your normal day is like and, and whether you have time to just look out the window and, and enjoy where you are. Certainly, great question. So our, our normal day is just like any Earth day. We work off of Greenwich Mean Time in London, and I'm generally waking up around 6.30 in the morning, eat a breakfast. We don't really shower, but you wipe yourself down with a towel, and then you jump right into your work day around 7.30. Uh, work about a 12-hour day, and we wrap up around 7.30 at night, have a, a little bit of time before I head off to bed, and around 10.30, I'm usually uh, lights out in my crew quarters, which is behind me. Uh, how do you steal peaks out the window? Well, if you had a view like this, you would take every opportunity to run down there and look outside. So if a procedure ends a little early or a science gets done and there's a little break, I'm down at the window looking out and so are my crewmates. Zero gravity or uh, microgravity is, is probably old hat for you now, but is there anything you can, you can demonstrate for us that you would not be able to do on Earth? I'm not a very good athlete, and uh, unfortunately, I got Robonaut in the way, but uh, basically any old maneuver up here is pretty simple when you take gravity out of the equation, and uh, I've really enjoyed becoming an expert at tumbling, cartwheels, flips, handstands, uh, all that stuff is really good. We'll try that when you get back uh, back down to Earth. How, how many people are aboard the uh, the space station? And I mentioned that you, uh, you took off in, in late May. How long do you stay up there for? So we have a six month uh, duration space flight here for the three of us, uh, me, a Russian and a German who launched together in May. And we joined three other uh, gentlemen who are already up here on the space station, uh, two Russians and one American. So right now our crew complement is six and we're getting ready in about five weeks to send three of those folks home and we'll get three new people up. Are you noticing any um, physical impact of, of having been in near weightlessness for that long a period of time? And, and does it um, inform your thinking about the sort of preparation Good that's going to be ahead. needed for an eventual flight to Mars? Oh, no doubt. Absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, one thing that I can say is NASA has done a fantastic job building up our countermeasures and our workout regimen. So I'm on the treadmill quite a bit. We've got bungee cords that hold us down and provide, uh, I weigh about 170 pounds and they provide about 130 pounds of force for me. And then we also have a resistance device that allows us to do squats, uh, bench press, things like that. And between these two systems, the treadmill and resistance, uh, I'm able to keep my muscle mass and my bone density up pretty well. Uh, one thing that is interesting, like you see, I, I look like I'm standing right here, and that's just because my feet are locked into uh, little locks on the floor. But uh, the fronts of my legs, uh, the muscles have changed pretty dramatically being up here just because I'm using my feet in different ways. Uh, and so I think with the countermeasures we have when we do a trip to Mars, it's going to require a lot of physical activity by the astronauts. But uh, no doubt when we get there, I think you'll be in good enough shape to at least after a day or two of adjustment to Martian gravity, you'll be able to start working. You've been uh, very busy on social media. People can follow you on Twitter at Astro underscore Reed, R-E-I-D. And I've looked at many of the pictures that you've posted. Could you talk a little about the, the mechanics of doing that? Also, if any particular uh, images stand out, anything you've seen out the window that surprised you? 
Uh, remind me about the second half of this question in a minute. So I don't want to have to tell you all my secrets, but I will let you in on a little one. Uh, it is very tough to get on the Internet itself up here. I can do it, but it really is difficult. So what I generally do, our email connectivity is fantastic. And I've got a gentleman on the ground who works at NASA, uh, my right-hand man, the magician behind the Twitter magic. So I send him uh, the images with the, the tweet captions, and he just fires them off on Twitter. And that, that really has worked. I'm actually the first U.S. astronaut that's had this ability. And I think that's really given us a great, great chance to connect on social media. So I owe NASA huge thanks for that. Uh, and then what really, every time you look out the window, there's some amazing sight that you didn't expect to see. Whether uh, this morning I, we were flying over the east coast of the U.S. and I looked back from our uh, cupola viewing area and there on the east coast was Richmond through D.C., the I-95 corridor running up through Baltimore, Philly, up into Manhattan. And that was amazing. But then what really blew me away is I just shifted my glance a little bit upward and there's Chicago, Detroit and Toronto on the horizon. And then above that, you could see the Aurora, the northern lights uh, with the sunrise just barely peeking in. And uh, I'd say for at least the last little bit, I mean, that just blew me away to see my hometown and this beauty was amazing. You're a uh, 1993 graduate of Delaney High School in Baltimore County. Could you talk a little about your, your path from Delaney to the space station? Sure. I, I wasn't necessarily a straight-A student. I did well at Delaney. Uh, I left there, though, with a great set of tools. I knew I wanted to be an engineer. I really wanted to be a pilot. So I went up to uh, New York, went to Rensselaer Polytechnic up there, and I pursued a degree in engineering, and that went very well. And then when I left RPI, I joined the Navy and became a Navy pilot. Uh, that career blossomed. I ended up becoming a test pilot in the Navy, and uh, all of those little wickets lined up perfectly to fit what NASA was looking for. And in 2009, I shifted my focus, uh, moved down to Houston, and uh, five years later, I'm on the space station. So it's pretty much the dream career I'd always envisioned. I, I don't know how it came true. Tell us about the, the space station itself. I guess it's, it's mostly fully uh, built out now, and we have some pictures of the, the exterior. From, from your camera, we just see this one compartment. So give us a sense of uh, just how much, how much space you have up there in space. Well, the dimensions, I think, everyone says they're about as big as a football field. That's our outer dimensions with our solar arrays. Inside, I'd say if you cleaned out about a 747, that's the room we have. Obviously, you can see here, uh, it's not as big around as a 747, but it's it's long. And uh, behind me, there's two modules that shoot off either side, a Japanese module and a European module. And then behind the camera, we have some more U.S. modules. And then uh, farther behind the camera, we have the, uh, the Russian half of the space station which is almost as big as what you see here. So really, it's, it's actually a gigantic volume. And uh, where I'm standing right now, just so you know, this is the U.S. laboratory. So this is really the heart of the space station, and this is where the science uh, goes on. I'm standing right here with Robonaut. Uh, we're working on some upgrades on him. Uh, I've got a German experiment running over here in a glove box. Uh, we've got a furnace here. We've got a really high-power uh, microscope here. So right now, even though there's no people, uh, this is just absolutely booming with science, even as we're talking here on the camera. Reed, is there anything I, I failed to ask you or, or anything that you would like uh, your family here in Maryland or your fellow graduates of uh, Delaney High to know? Uh, I just, life is great. Yeah, and, uh, and I really wish... I really just wish everyone could come up here, even if it was just for a few hours, just come up to this, this viewing platform and look down at our Earth, look back on Maryland and, and just see how, really, how tiny the Chesapeake Bay is. The first time I saw it, I didn't even recognize it until I looked at our map and I realized, wow, that is the Chesapeake. And this morning, I'm looking from the tip of Florida, Key West, all the way up through Maine uh, in one glance. And it really just, it's so gorgeous. I really wish everybody had a chance. and. Uh, Everybody deserves that chance. So I hope, I hope someday everybody can come up and take a look. Commander Wiseman, thank you very much. We'll take you up on that, and we'll, we'll do the next interview in person. Hey, absolutely. That's a deal. Come on up. Let's do it. I would love to have you.